Stainless steel cookware is the most versatile cookware you can buy. But how do you know that you're buying quality? And what are your expectations of performance? Today, we're going to cover the ABCs of choosing the right stainless steel cookware for you. Hi, I'm Jed from Cook Culture. So stainless steel cookware is the backbone of the cookware industry. There is nonstick, there's copper, there's cast iron, there's ceramic, there's all different types, but really the core of cookware on the market for the last 50, 60, maybe 70 years has been good quality, basic stainless steel cookware. And stainless steel cookware is not just stainless steel. Stainless steel is your inner cooking surface. The inner core is going to be where all the work is done, the conductivity to the pan, and that can be aluminum, it can be aluminum alloy, it can be copper, um, it can be silver, it can be gold. Uh, there's been lots of different sorts of combinations over time, but typically it's aluminum inside or what is called encapsulated onto the bottom. So this is a clad pan where this is made out of out of sheet metal that is flattened uh, and then rolled with other types of alloys and aluminum and then stainless steel so it becomes a clad. So you have like a sandwich of material and it is then shaped into a pan. You can also have what's called encapsulated where you have a capsule or a disc that is glued or adhered to the bottom of the pan. Um, two different ways of getting to the same place and it's not meaning that one is better than the other and that's for a different conversation. Uh, because today we're talking about clad cookware. Uh, so in clad cookware, that is really the dominance of the top end of the market. In when you're looking to invest in really good quality stainless steel, you're typically prim primarily going to run into clad cookware. And like I said before there, encapsulated cookware can be of good quality but really 95% of what you're going to find is going to be clad cookware. And the, the easy rule of thumb that I've said many times in the past and what we're going to discuss today is choosing cookware when you grab a piece of cookware, no matter where you are, what sort of retailer you're in, if you're grabbing a pan compared to a pan, the easiest way to understand if that pan is going to be of a better quality is how much does it weigh. So there are a lot of technical aspects to a pan, but weight matters. It's a considerable factor in when you're buying cookware. So when those two pans are sitting on the hob together, how quickly they heat up and how they hold their heat and disperse their heat is a, a major difference between how they're going to work. Now, you can start to split hairs a little bit because it doesn't matter really if you maintain your temperatures. So you could have a lower quality pan that could do almost exactly the same performance or finished product as a higher quality pen that you spent more money on. And you just have to understand how to vary the heat on your stove. So there are many factors that go into cooking and there are many factors that go into choosing the right cookware. And if you are looking at cookware and you're considering the ocean of cookware in stainless steel that is on the market and you're like, I, you know, I don't want cast iron, I don't want coated cookware, I just want something completely neutral that's going to work for me day in and day out. I want to buy a set of cookware because it's always pretty good value. What you're going to be considering, of course, is price. Different types of cookware that you're going to find in the market that all come with different offers, different pricing, different discounts, and it can be pretty overwhelming. Like I see it pretty overwhelming and I've been doing this for over 25 years and the price fluctuations and what things are and the sell within the copy and trying to make sense of it is, is hard. Understanding the, the quality of what you're getting and what that brand is, is, is critically important. And it just takes a ton of research. What I always suggest is to find yourself a retailer close to you that you really trust and let them do that work for you. Trying to make sense of all of this just by searching the internet can sometimes be pretty overwhelming to be trusting that you're getting the right brand or the right quality and the right price. Cause we all want to make sure that we're getting the right price and the right quality. We want to be really happy with the purchase that we've made. So to, to summarize that, uh, there are many, many offers 
trusting the best brand, Allclad, DeMeyer are the top of the heap. Those are the two big, big brands. Personally, I think DeMeyer is the best quality cookware of stainless steel in the world at the moment. Nobody competes with them for quality to price. Uh, and then there are just an ocean of other ones that fill the kind of middle market to the high end. If you're gonna spend $400 on a set of cookware, or you're gonna spend $1,600 on a set of cookware, what are you spending that difference on? Like what's the value in 400 to 1600? It's a big difference. It all depends to the person using the cookware. I've had customers that have bought, you know, $200 sets of cookware from me and have been super happy. That works really, really well for them. I have customers that buy, you know, the DeMeyer Atlantis Proline combination sets that are 16, $1,800 and they love them and use them you know, to their maximum all the time. And you know, those customers are really happy. We take on the responsibility to make sure we're selling the right cookware to the right people. You know, I am not gonna try to convince somebody who's just stepping into cookware or cooking to buy a $1,600 set when they really don't even know how they wanna cook yet. You know, maybe they wanna cook a lot more with cast iron and stainless steel isn't for them. So trying to understand you know, what the best set is for you is really important. When you spend the money on cookware, when you're buying you know, a $300 fry pan or a $100 fry pan or a $50 fry pan, what do you end up getting for that? And what I always explain to people in spending the extra money on higher quality cookware is that you're getting a larger buffer within how that cookware works. So if you think of the heating process as a spectrum, of your cookware from you know, off to high sear. And as the cookware starts to work, is that you're gonna have a really sweet spot for that stainless steel cookware uh, where it works perfectly well and almost becomes nonstick in how it works. And we're gonna go over that visually in a little bit here. And when you're in that sweet spot, you'll have a, a, a simple test that I'll show you with some water that's going to allow the pan to you know, sear and close things up, but then become quite nonstick. It's a fine line of where you can then get into a, a browning and burning of the pan and start to build some carbon buildup on the pan. And then you have what everybody will recognize as that kind of black or brown oily kind of burnt on marks on your stainless steel pan. And that becomes kind of tacky and yucky and it gets messy and ugly. And that comes from overheating and it's that fine line. So from low to medium quality cookware, that spectrum, full spectrum, that sweet spot is narrow. It's quite narrow to a point where if it's really light and really cheap cookware, it's super narrow. So finding that sweet spot of being able to be like, yeah, it just works for me. I just put on the food and it just does what I want. And every time my results are excellent to like, wow, this is really hard to use. And those are the people that usually find that a coated cookware, nonstick and or ceramic, that sort of thing, works so much better for them because they have that buffer and it doesn't stick or, or uh, become gummy and yucky and nothing sticks to it. And so they can cook kind of however, like willy nilly and just do whatever. And the results don't as much matter. And the cooking, uh, the, the cleaning to the cookware is a big deal. And that's why nonstick works so well for so many people. But when we're looking for high quality results, that comes from stainless steel, that comes from cast iron, uncoated cookware. And you can develop flavors and caramelization and browning. It's so much better using stainless and cast iron and not a coated cookware. So for the majority of us that are listening to this long into my conversation, you care about cooking with stainless or you care about cooking with cast iron and you don't want to be using a nonstick. And so what I'm getting back to here in the, the, the spectrum is that the better the quality the cookware, the wider that spectrum gets. So it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So when you get into something like a seven layer aluminum, aluminum alloy pan, you know, made in, in Belgium, one of the highest quality pieces of cookware made, the cooking spectrum is really wide, or, or I guess to get back to it correctly, the spectrum uh, of sweet spot is wide. The whole, this is the full spectrum from hot to, to cold. Um, but that, that cooking sweet spot is actually quite wide. So it's very forgiving. It allows you to cook 
in a, in a kind of sweet spot space that if you put that food on, it would do the job that you're expecting within a really nice wide angle instead of being this like really thin, the pan has to be perfect and you want to be like finding that exact same perfect space uh, and, and putting the food on right at the right time and the pan may or may not overheat for you or burn for you on when you're using it, depending on what it is that you're cooking, how cold your food is, whichever. When you're using something like the Demeyer, especially the Pro line, and even the five ply in industry, it gives you so much more time to, to be relaxed and to get your food in and for it not to start burning and you're not billowing smoke. And that's what you're paying for. That's the, the money spent, right? So I could get the same results from a $50 pan as I can from a $300 pan. It's not that the results are gonna be any better, but using the pan day in, day out for all different types of jobs, different applications, different sort of speed, you're gonna get very good, high quality, consistent results out of using a very high quality pan. And it's not gonna be a constant stress on if that pan's gonna work exactly as I want it each and every time. Light pans have a much smaller sweet spot window and you have to be so exact with them. And so that's the luxury that you're paying for. So if you can afford it and you're buying better quality, you're buying the luxury of the pan giving you a more optimal cooking temperature. Okay, I hope that all makes sense. If that doesn't make sense, please leave a comment below and I'll re respond to you. But uh, I hope that all makes sense. So that's why you spend good money on high quality cookware and it's always heavier weight than lighter cookware. And there's, there's your gauge. I've taken the ProLine seven layer fry pan here. I've been heating it up on a six and now we're gonna go to do the, the water test and then we're going to a fried egg and then a scrambled egg and see if we have it not thick. Some water, being it's on induction. Induction is always a little bit cooler on the outside. So it's got some heat going on on the inside and it does this funky little bouncy around thing with just a variance on the outside of induction. So this is common to see this induction, but what's happening in the middle there is that it's doing its it's doing its thing. So, out it comes. We're gonna get some oil into there. All around that pan. Give that a sec. That was you know, room temperature oil going into a hot pan. Temperature variance is really important here. So, it's also really important to get a warm egg or room temperature egg. Putting in a cold out of the fridge egg is gonna radically change the temperature of, uh, of the cooking surface and it's gonna create sticking. Uh, and so what we're gonna do, we've got that heated. That guy's gonna go in.
two eggs or three eggs done two ways in a stainless steel pan with virtually no cleanup. So leading frost effect really helps you understand exactly where your pan is. Different pans have a higher variant, but that works incredibly well. So there you go. Okay, so we've got these four pans heating on the hob. So we have an all clad D5. So that's a five ply all clad six inch pan. We have an all clad 10 inch copper core five ply. We have a nine and a half inch five ply Demeyer industry and 11 inch seven ply Atlantis or Proline uh, fry pan. We're gonna get these guys onto here and see what happens. So got a little bit of splitting there. Got some splitting there. Okay, so he's kind of freaking out a little bit around the outside. These guys are falling up. He's kind of all freaking out a little bit. So the two high quality pans here are kind of freaking out. Right? So, and we've got the two five plies that are behaving as you want them to. So we've got these, I love playing with these things. So we've got the water bouncing around, doing its thing just right. Where the, the, the heavier pans have behaved more radically. So we're going to crank up the heat a little bit and we're gonna see what ends up happening with that. So I felt they were quite well preheated. Um, you know, these guys here at a six are sitting really nicely. These are totally prepared and ready now to have uh, whatever I'm gonna cook into them go in so that like they're, they're just ready. You put a little bit of oil on there, uh, wipe it around and you're gonna be ready to go. So those guys are showing that they're ready. We've gone up with a seven to these guys. So behaving a little bit more as we expected. So two things I'm seeing here is that either they needed even more pre time at a six to penetrate, to come to the same heat. And what I'm going to do by going up to a seven is that I'm going to go past that perfect spot. So being impatient is not going to do me well going forward. And so I should have just left them at a six and left them until they came to this. This just because they're lighter, this happened sooner. So, and I'm saying that more out of experience than any sort of logical scientific sort of thing. I'm just saying that if I'm being impatient with really heavy pans and I'm like, oh, it's not there yet. So I'm going to crank the heat. That heat continues to go up. And that's what I want to be very careful of because what's going to happen is that the, the temperature here is going to be different than here. Even though this is doing the same effect now, I'm going to have a hotter cook on this pan. So longer time, I bet would have been better if I'd given these even more time, but these guys came to temperature in about five minutes, three minutes, and these guys weren't there yet. Now I've taken them both to a seven and now everybody's behaving the same way. But experience has taught me that if I go too quickly into this at a higher temperature, I may not get the cooking results I want. But like I was saying before, your spectrum of where it's going to work really well for you is larger. So if we are a little bit hotter in these two pans because they're higher quality, it's going to be more forgiving for us. So what I mean by that is that I have eggs here. And what I'm going to do now is that I'm going to wipe out the pans and we're going to put an egg into these pans. I'm going to get the water out. And I'm going to put in some oil into these pans and we are going to fry an egg and see what the results of that are. So a little bit of grapeseed oil 
in the pan, all around. So remember, those two are hotter. This guy's smoking now. So is the six inch. So as I was saying earlier, this guy is a hotter cook. He's a smaller pan. So it makes sense that he's browning. Okay, so what did we learn? We learned that you can do almost anything you want with stainless steel. It's the absolute most versatile cookware out there. So learning how to use it is really important. So knowing your hob, knowing the thickness and the density of your cookware, getting those two matched up, using the water, the mercury effect to, to practice with until you learn it. You probably don't need to do that every single time. I definitely don't. Um, but you know, using that to learn your pan and play and play and play. And, and figure out exactly what those right combinations of heat and, and weight work on your hob. And try your different burners too. Different burners have different power levels, so try that also. But incredibly versatile cookware. So if I was to suggest one type of cookware to people for all different pan, pots and pans, stainless steel is it, and a high quality stainless steel. So I'm a big fan of the Demeyer cookware in the industry and all the Atlantis Pro line. Uh, those do very, very well for me. I love the non rivets. I love the finish to the, to the pans. I love the, the shapes and the handles are super, super comfortable. So they're my number one choice. Uh, and I sold and have used all clad for decades. Um, but Demeyer replaces that across the board in every way they've made a superior cookware. So it's a, it's my number one choice of top quality cookware. So I hope that this video has helped you identify. Uh, the nuances and some of the difficulties in using stainless and how to counteract those things to make it really simple. Because cooking with stainless is really, really easy once you get the heat and the combination of temperatures down. And as you saw all the variances that we had today with some successes and failures, um, how to nail it and how to get that, that success at the end of the day. So please reach out, uh, leave us a comment, let us know if you have any questions or contact us directly at the store. We'd love to help you. So thanks so much.